Welcome to FYI, Barry Zivan's my name, and the name of my guest is Kate Sullivan. She is from Afton, Minnesota, and has a marvelous art studio there, uh, which she owns and runs, and she's gonna tell us all about it. Kate, wonderful to see you again. Oh, yes. Uh, we met uh, at a book signing uh, about a, oh, several months ago, and uh, the art that you've created, uh, your whole life has been just about art. In, in several forms, is that mm -hmm. right? That is correct, yes. Good, well, welcome. Thank you. And um, uh, tell us where, where, this, where this all started. Are you from Afton originally? or? Well, actually, I am not from Afton. I'm from Oakdale, okay. but my family is from Afton. We, um, the family came there in the 1850s. And when I was here taking care of my mother, when I was, um, she was ill a number of years ago, I um, I was started volunteering at the museum down in Afton. Just I found it a quite beautiful place, and discovered all about my family and how they came in the 1850s, and where they resided in. And what um, I did discover was is that um, there was an old schoolhouse for sale, and I purchased it, and opened an art studio. And the old schoolhouse is very special to me because my great grandfather went to school in the building. Oh, wow. So that's where the studio came from. But I've been creating art all of my life. Yeah. That's wonderful. So, what was the first art you created? Was it paintings or or what? Well, I used to sit with my grandfather um, in Oakdale, and I'd sit with him, and he would paint. He was an artist. He was an engineer at 3M, but he was also an artist at home at night. And we would sit together and create together and uh, he um, taught me how to paint, he taught me how to grid, he taught me how to put things onto canvas and how to see with my inner eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cr worked together through that and um, it was just really fun. It was just, and I just wanted to continue and did my whole life where I went to school for the, or worked for the school district as a young adult, created children's learning activities. I worked in the theater and created sets and painted backdrops and worked in fashion design and costuming. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite a creative life. Which, which theater? Well, it was, a, it was a community theater called Capital City Theater. And if anybody remembers Ron Maddox, he started the theater. Remember, uh, Ron yeah. was a good friend of mine for a long oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, go ahead. So, Sorry. Yes. So um, I was a volunteer there for many, many, many years, and then um, it closed um, in, well, I just, I can't really remember the year, but sometime in the late 90s. No, maybe it was the 80s. But anyway, I took all the costumes, and I opened a costume shop in North St. Paul. So we created costumes for a number of years. It was That's very fun. Rented the costumes and sold them. Little sidebar, uh, Ron created Taste of Minnesota, too. Didn't oh, yes, yeah. I used to work at the Taste of Minnesota. No. I created the children's activity area way back when it first began. That's wonderful. So, so it's been a very eclectic life. <laughs> very much uh, so. We're going to see some samples of uh, some of your artwork as the show progresses here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, is there a favorite form of art that you do? My favorite form of art is actually stained glass. On my um, father's side of the family, we had a stained glass artist. My great-great-grandfather was a stained glass artist. And so that comes naturally. I believe that that came in my genes. I just knew how to do it. I felt it. I love touching the glass. I love the sound of glass cutting. And that would be my favorite. Um, the least lucrative for business, because a piece takes many, many hours, and it's very expensive. I do have a, I like to do church windows is my favorite. I like religious art. Uh, I have a church window actually up in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota at Holy Rosary Church right on Main Street. Wow. It's a beautiful uh, 44 inch window. That's, so. that's outstanding. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I would imagine, I mean, uh, seeing stained glass in, in churches, uh, people don't realize, I guess, how much work goes into that. Uh, is it, it's pretty time consuming, isn't it? Well, the old churches it is because it's leaded glass. I, I'd like to do the Tiffany um, way where you've got the small little pieces and you copper foil each of the pieces and then you solder them all together to form lampshades, form windows, form anything. You can do three dimensional pieces with little pieces. It's fun. So, so what do you have for sale at the art studio? 
At the studio, I have paintings. I have many, many paintings. I'm an intention in a. I'm actually a student in a class right now for a program called Intentional Creativity, and so I have been practicing my intentional creativity, and that's seeing with my inner eye, many, many layers. Um, it's a step-by-step -step process that I will be teaching next year at the studio. Mm -hmm. But my work, and you will see some of it here today, um, is based on the painting on the intentional creativity. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know one of the paintings uh, shows a, uh, a lady with a, a dog, uh, and uh, can you describe how you choose your subjects? Oh, well, I, you know, that's the one painting that I didn't bring, and in fact, I should have, you've seen that painting before. Well, I th I thought that's the lady with the bear. Oh, the bear, oh. That's a bear. I don't, I don't know a dog from a bear. <laughs> Hello. You, you have <laughs> seen the dog painting. The dog painting okay. is my, me and myself and my dog. Ah. And it was based on a Frida Kahlo class where we painted our lives and we painted images into that painting and you'll see as the paintings show up here that they're done with images. So the one you're referring to right now is, a, is the gypsy. I do a lot of painting of girls and women in gypsy form. Um, I actually, I'm not a, a gypsy, but I own a gypsy wagon, a true uh, gypsy wagon and you can see that down at the old school art studio and we have a lot of fun painting and dancing and mm. around that but so I add do a lot of gypsy women and then I add in parts of my life into the painting and some of them mean things to you and other people too and with the one you're referring to is the bear but it's really like um, don't mess with mama bear <laughs> I love so. it so the gypsy wagon that's that's uh, fascinating I, I know I've seen it you have uh, did that come from Romania or someplace, or, or was it from here? That is from here. Um, the man who built the uh, the wagon was a Western reenactor, and he was a medicine man. So he built the, the medicine man wagon, but everything is authentic, 1880s. Wow, so it's, from it's scratch, phenomenal. it's beautiful. You have to you have to stop down and see it because you can't believe it until you see it in person. While we're thinking of that, uh, what's the address of the uh, studio? Okay, we're in a downtown Afton, Minnesota, right behind the Squire House, north of the park, of the park in the cen in center of town, and the address is 15888 34th Street South. In Afton. In downtown yeah. Afton, yeah. right along the river, St. Croix River banks. Afton, the only thing I remembered until I got involved with the the art and the book signings, et cetera, in Afton, mm -hmm. of course, was Afton Alps. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> which was part of my life when I was doing the ski scene over on Channel 5. But um, And I used to go out to Afton Alps all the time uh, when the brothers owned it, and now Vale owns it. Correct, <laughs> yes. But um, it's, it's a fascinating town. I, I always say there are two towns in Minnesota I, that remind me of uh, really an art community near San Francisco, which is Sausalito. And so uh, Stillwater and Afton, uh, they <laughs> those are the two. Right. Do you have a friendly rivalry with Stillwater or, or not? Oh yeah, we're great. Yeah, yeah, we go to Stillwater all the time. I love Stillwater. Yeah, Bing Crosby's mother was born there. Oh, that's the first you, I heard of that. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just filled with trivia no one cares about. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that's interesting. Yes, I know. Yeah. You know, I so uh, for Afton, there are a lot of events uh, in Afton. Uh, can you tell us what uh, what uh, goes on there throughout the year? Okay, well we're getting ready right now. Next weekend is our Fall Art in the Park. It is, um, you probably, when this airs, it'll probably have been done with. And so I hope everybody has enjoyed it. But we bring in over a hundred artists into our downtown park area and then the businesses all participate. As far as the old school art studio, I have over a dozen artists that we will be demonstrating and uh, they will be selling their wares. We have a stage with um, music. We have a, a seven-piece women's band called uh, Kathy Drinkwine with Friends on Saturday. And we have um, uh, Tom Erickson on Sunday. So we have a full set of music and entertainment for you um, during Art in the Park. We also do Strawberry Fest in the spring and that is pretty similar to Art in the Park. So you can look on the website and find those. Uh, the kids, we do the Kids Trick or Treat Trail. This is the very popular event in Afton. All the businesses participate. 
and we have painted rocks here at the schoolhouse and we hide over a hundred rocks and the kids find the rocks during these events mm -hmm. and bring them to the schoolhouse and they get a prize out of the treasure chest. I want to hold that up if I can and then uh, uh, we'll be getting a close-up uh, later. Well, actually, it's, you can actually see it here pretty well. Uh, how about the other one here too? This there will be over a hundred rocks hidden for each day for art in the park and also for uh, yeah. trick or treat trail. Hey, here's a bumblebee, if we can see that. There we go. The bumblebee says, be kind. Yeah, be kind, okay. <laughs> many, many artists come to the studio each Thursday and paint these rocks for the kids. The kids get to keep the rocks also. So. That's wonderful. So how many years now have you had the studio? Seven okay. years, Seven bought years. it in 2012. Okay, so. and um, how many students do you, do you teach? Oh, I think um, I've given any given classes from six to a dozen people. We've had as many as 20 for mm -hmm. painting classes, for stained glass. We do uh, fiber arts. We had over 30 women la two summers ago for uh, spinning and a weaving workshop. Mm -hmm. Just We brought in somebody, um, Natalie Redding from California, and she came and taught the class. It was very exciting. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with her. She has a TV reality show, and she's a, a shepherdess, and she um, also spins her own wool and is an artist. Oh, wow. She's quite well known in the fiber fields. No, pardon my ignorance. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> so you also say you have a theater background. Is it also, beside the building sets and designing sets, et cetera, acting as well or not? Uh, well, funny you should ask this because I've had to act in several of them for lack of um, performers, uh, but I have been asked not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can identify. <laughs> <laughs> I just am not do not have a musical ability. Well, that's fun. So, uh, comparing the acting to the painting, uh, what would you prefer to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, paint, of course. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. I'll be painting at this coming Art in the Park, which is going to be a little nerve-wracking because it's the first time I've actually exhibited and, and performed, basically, painting at the same time. Mm -hmm. And talking about the technique and talking about my beliefs on art and where it comes from and our creativity. Maybe you can describe uh, for us, too, some of the other paintings you brought, um, which we're going to see. Okay, well, um, I brought along um, I brought along the back of a chair, which is very interesting. In Afton, we have a fundraiser um, during Art in the Park where artists from all over the area uh, paint chairs, and then the chairs are auctioned off for donation to our Afton Historical Museum. Mm. And I brought that chair along with, and I painted a pig in a martini glass with a paintbrush. And I've actually uh, mixed media the chair, so the chair actually has what they call crash glass on the back of it, and that is what the martini glass is made out of, is um, the crash glass. What crash glass is, it's broken glass from um, broken windshields, broken shower doors, and it breaks into little tiny, tiny pieces. And when it's, the sunlight catches it, it sparkles and glitters, and you've all seen it on the side of the road. So can you can imagine that in a piece of artwork. Oh my goodness, I can't. How do you collect that? You get out with a broom and you sweep <laughs> it up into a little dustpan and then you wash it all off piece by piece. Oh my gosh. Or you can order it. Uh, there are several different outlets and craft uh, uh, um, distributors that will sell crash glass, but it is expensive. Wow, I would imagine. A little bag is about $30. Oh my God! So it's much, much easier to go out and just sweep it up and wash it up. <laughs> so if we see you along the side of a highway, we know what you're yes, doing. Yes, and I actually know where there is some glass that I need to get to today <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> before somebody else does. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, the Twin Cities, uh, uh, as you know, this show is seen on YouTube as well as right, locally. Yes. And uh, for those uh, watching even around the world, uh, the Twin Cities uh, art community is, is just gigantic. The artists uh, in performing arts and, and uh, visual arts like you right, do. Yes. Um, I wonder what, what has made us so unique because um, 
the only the only artist from my hometown, Pittsburgh, that I can who I can remember is Andy Warhol, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's he, nice. So he, he it's a good did pretty well for himself. But yes, he uh, uh, he was very eclectic in his work, but. Um, what do you think? Is there something about the uh, the climate, <laughs> the atmosphere? <laughs> the long winter the long <laughs> and, and lack of stuff to do. Um, no, actually, to tell you the truth, I think that um, I think as human beings, we're coming out of our shell a little bit, and we're willing to take a chance and actually see that we are all creative. We were born cre creative. We live on a creative planet. We were created by a creator. And the creativeness is inside of our soul. A lot of it is even ancestry, you know, from your uh, uh, generations past. You can dig deep down through your gene pool and, and figure you can create. Um, and creativity is, is anybody can make anything. It's all technique. It's all piece by piece. Um, it's, uh, I can teach you to do stained glass. I can teach you to... Uh, make a, a shawl, I can teach you to do art journaling, and I can teach you to paint step by step. Mm -hmm. And I think that people just really, they wanted to give it a try, and, and then they find they can do it, mm -hmm. and not so afraid of it. And then it, 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 you can take it as far as you want. You can continue with it, or you can try something else, or you can say, I just did that, and I like it, and I'm happy. Because it's not any different than cooking a baking a pie, cooking a dinner, or in your job, or anything that you do. Creating is thinking. That's all you're doing is thinking. Very interesting. Uh, I paint lamps, landscapes. I know you do. I'm so excited. But, it's, it's but, so but I could not paint the face of a human being if, it was, if my life depended on it. I do not know how to do that. Is there a certain, you talk about your inner eye, um, is there a certain characteristic uh, for people who can do a certain thing, but you know, my landscape paintings, are, they're okay, but <laughs> as far as painting a person or whatever, not, in, not, not a chance. What's, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, painting a human face is very difficult because you're thinking of the face. You're thinking, I have to make a nose, and in your head, you're thinking does you what a nose looks like. So that's really, it is tough and I really, I still struggle with it and you'll see with my other paintings that they're, you know, it, it, I got a lot of work to do, a lot of studying yet to do. But there is a really easy step program. It's, um, it can be a 13 step program to a 30 step program. I've learned it from um, my teacher, uh, Shiloh um, Sophia, who learned it from her mentor, but it's really, just uh, the simple Chinese uh, Asian face. So everything is in a curve. So when I'm walking you a step by step through painting that face, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in use. Eight, nine, 10, 11. You know, it's just, if you think about in the face, everything is you, is in the shape of a you. Oh my gosh. Your eyebrows are you. And then to fill in your face, anything forward is brighter and everything backwards is darker. And it just, they take on a life of their own. Wow. They may be a little cartoonish, but <laughs> that's what I like to do. How, how long would it take a, a novice student who's just never done any painting at all to master uh, the ability to do what you've just described? Well, I've worked with many students, and they will go home with a painting they're quite proud of. Oh, wow. Just right off the bat? Right off the bat. It, may, it might not be a Rembrandt, <laughs> but it's something beautiful, and it's very meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. And it's part of their life, their soul, their muse, their inner per personality, and they've added symbols and earrings and other things that I draw out during the um, class mm -hmm. um, that you will, that mean something to you. Yeah. So it's very fun. We, we do a lot with totem animals, too, or animals. Mm -hmm. That's the bear in the, in, the, um, in the one painting that I was, spoke of earlier. And the the, pig. My dog. Yeah, and the pig. Yeah. Oh, I have a pig, yes. Oh. Yes, yeah, the, the pig in the martini glass. Right? Yeah. yeah. For some reason, this is a new movement down at the studio. We're all painting animals. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, 
I wonder, you know, maybe an elementary uh, question, but I wonder what the fascination is with art, what, it, what the fascination has been almost from the beginning. Uh, I know it's an expression of either how we feel or what we see, et cetera, but uh, when, uh, in the history of art, when, when did it, do you think it all began? I mean, the 10th century, 9th century? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> from the beginning? Forever. Everybody's always either drawn or created something. I mean, you, we used to have to make our own clothes. Now we go down to the store and buy them. We used to weave our own fabric to make our clothes. Mm -hmm. So things have changed, and art has become more of, rest, of, an, of a hobby than a necessity. But ask any, even kids, when you're first born, ask any child up to at least kindergarten, if you, they, you ask them if they're an artist, they will say, yes, I am. And they are very proud of their work. It's somewhere comes along the line that as we grow older that we kind of get, we start to judge what we're doing. We start to see with our outer eyes and not our inner eyes. So we, in copying, if I was to paint this cup, I'm looking at it and I would paint that cup and then I would judge my painting does it look like that cup? But if I was pa to paint a cup that I can't see at all, mm -hmm. and then I look at my painting and I just painted my cup, it'd be a beautiful cup, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And there'd be no judgment on that cup. Mm -hmm. it, it just occurred to me that, that people who, I mean, I've been very blessed. Uh, I've been to the Louvre and uh, have oh, seen yeah. uh, everything in there, but um, have not been to the Vatican, and I would love to see Michelangelo's painting, of course, of the Sistine Chapel, the ceiling. Uh, I wonder if, if young students who had never even thought about art uh, see masterful works like that, all of a sudden say, oh my gosh, wow, this is, a human being did that. Uh, and for Michelangelo, I guess, was on his back that he was doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, is there any validity to that kind of thinking, that all of a sudden people are inspired by, the, by something that hits them? Well, I hope they're inspired by the old masters. I mean, I'm inspired by them. We, uh, we study them. I, st I teach classes at the schoolhouse. Um, we, uh, we do or you know, like just an imitation of such things that they do so they find out how hard it is to do a fresco or paint mm -hmm. or even a mix paints. Back in the day, they made all their own paints. And so we didn't go to the Hobby Lobby and the other places to buy paints. Oh my gosh. Craft stores. How would they make paint? You know, I watched a TV show on it and I thought it would be fun and I've seen some YouTube channels where they've been teaching it or showing us how it was done with the pigments and stuff. And that's something I'd like to look into. Maybe we should talk about that since you're a painter too. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm lucky to pick it up the brush, you know, <laughs> whatever. I've seen his paintings. They are fabulous. Oh, you're very kind. Thank yes. you. My gosh. You, uh, are there any in your book? Uh, no, there are none in my book. Now see, there's a, you gotta write another book. No, the day I write another book <laughs> is the day the moon turns into a pickle. Oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> With cheese and mustard. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> no, that's uh, my my book writing days are over. But thank you so much. Oh, well. Yeah, um, uh, I guess. Oh, I see you have yar yarn with you. Well, what's this about? Well, we have a tradition in in intentional creati creativity where we pass the uh, the red thread. And what the th red thread does is it connects us, each and every one of us, together. So before we been, begin a class, we'll begin a class with a uh, short meditation. We'll all pass the red thread, cut each other's red thread, and then we're connected for eternity. And even if you're not in the class with us, you can um, have your own red thread or we pass it and maybe I'll meet you someday. It brings us all together as a community, community of creative souls. Oh, what a wonderful uh, concept. It's an old tradition. There's many, many forms of religious beliefs with the red thread. The uh, Asians believe that it was the um, red thread to eternity and Native Americans, was it was the red thread, the red road. And it's been used since the beginning of time, the red thread for a connect, creative connection or a connection. Oh my gosh. So. We learn things on this program. <laughs> Thank you so much, that's wonderful. See, I have my red thread on here for oh. my last class. That's wonderful. What are the ages of the uh, students? 
We are at the schoolhouse. We have kids from, oh, I'd say five, six years old, or even younger, painting the rocks if we do a rock painting class. Wow. But usually they need to be, uh, uh, the parents need to participate with them if they're young all the way up to a hundred, I guess. I was going to say geezers like me. <laughs> That'd be marvelous. And, oh. and uh, for how long do the uh, the classes last? How many? The classes are they range from a two and a half hour class to all day workshops to weekend workshops to even overnight uh, retreats. Mm -hmm. And then for several weeks or days or, or what? Sometimes they'll go. It'll be a six week class. You can check all that out on the website mm -hmm. on the upcoming classes. We are a seasonal studio, so it does shut down um, at the beginning of December and we close for till m March. April depending on weather and then we open back up again and start our classes all summer long again and this winter we'll be putting some um, classes up online so we'll be able to participate we do do a lot with Facebook we have uh, a lot of we Facebook live and so you can all participate in no matter where you are in the world oh, that's wonderful what is your website address it's oldschoolartstudio.net oldschoolartstudio.net Art Yes, okay. I think she's going to put that up on the credits afterwards. So. Yeah, that's great. And Mary is our director, producer, uh, everything. <laughs> the everything. And, and Charlie. And, yes, and, yes, and, and, you've all and, been and, very and, kind. And sometimes Scott and the wonderful crew here. Well, I can't think, uh, thank you enough. Uh, anything that we've, we've missed, do you think? I don't think so and I'm sure I'll think of things later so can we, I come back again we'll, oh, love now it. that we got the first one over with and I don't have to be nervous <laughs> oh, no need to be nervous oh, no yeah. need to be nervous thank you yeah and and your outfits I I, I know from being with you at the uh, the book signings and stuff they're very colorful and yes we dress uh, in the bohemian style and we do bohemian style dancing and mm -hmm. uh, we, we like to do parades. So you no. will see us in the parades around town. No, your, your daughter, uh, Jenny, mm -hmm. uh, is she into art too? No, Jenny is a assistant principal down in a school in Florida in an um, elementary school. So oh she my. has to be creative every day, every single day she's got to think. Oh sure, with those kids. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she likes to dabble around with me a little bit. In but Florida. my grandchildren are very creative. That's great. So. In Florida, do you do any art teaching too? Yes, I have a beautiful studio in Florida, but it's a private studio attached to, to my home. And I do do private classes down in Florida. So if you're down in the Fort Myers area, you yeah. can look me up. Look you up. So yep. I, let's Old do that. Oldschoolartstudio.net. And you can just message me off of that. And I'm Kate. That's terrific, Kate. Thanks a million. Oh, Thank it's you. such a pleasure to be with you and sit here with you, Barry. He, you have no idea how funny he is. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. And uh, shameless plug time. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, my book, it's uh, available on Amazon. It's called uh, My Life Among the Giants. And uh, very uh, blessed to have it endorsed on the back by former Vice President Mondale, as well as ABC TV's Sam Donaldson, one of my best friends. and. Uh, wonderful host of a couple of the documentaries, three documentaries I've produced, and uh, there's a lot in here that uh, might surprise you. So, until next time, again, thanks to Kate Sullivan, and uh, we'll see you next time.